Lamar in the pocket. That's caught in a lot of traffic by Nelson Aguilar to the end zone. Somersault touchdown. Play clock at one. They get it off. And into the end zone goes Edwards for the touchdown. As the crowd sees the replay, meanwhile, there's a lot. Whoa! Here's Burrow shaking his head after trying to throw on the sideline, and you can tell there's a problem. Oh, there is a problem for the Cincinnati Bengals. Let's be honest, problem for us, the football fans watching Thursday Night Football, because we are excited for a showdown between two AFC North Titans. But Burrow's wrist injury, which knocked him out late in the first half, uh, kind of put the curtains on this game. Uh, a 34-20 win for the Ravens, who uh, pretty much cruise after the touchdown um, that put them ahead, that kind of coincided with Burrow on the sideline trying to get some throws off. He can't even grip the football, and, you know, you saw it on his face. A lot of frustration and concern. Dan Hans is here around the NFL with Greg Rosenthal. Uh, the Ravens move to 8-3, and three, Greg. They um, not only further kind of entrenched themselves atop uh, football's most competitive division, uh, they might have put Cincinnati into a potential death spiral here, especially as we await word on Burroughs' health. Yeah, we're taping this right after the show, so by the time you guys listen to this, maybe there will be more report reporting out. Maybe there will be more news. We'll keep an eye on it. I think we got to just start with, with Burrow and, and the Bengals. I, I want to get to the Ravens. We always want to get to the winning team. It was a big game, but this is one of the biggest stories in the league this year. He shows up to Baltimore coming off the plane because of this local footage that uh, was shown in Cincinnati with some sort of what looks like a, a brace on his wrist. And even the Bengals tweeted out like, uh, oh, look at Joe Swag, you know, walking in uh, on Twitter that showed he had something on his wrist before the game. And then they deleted it. And, and Twitter went crazy oh, about it. And and the brace thing from the local news actually was a day before. And I, I saw a clip from Chris Long who, who went through all the all 22 from the week before looking for the the play. And he, he thinks he found it actually like the second play of the game against the Texans and Burrow came off the field shaking his wrist. And he obviously played through it last week, but there was something. So he came into the game apparently with something despite not being on the injury report. And yet Dan, he played magnificent. I, I think early in this game, the touchdown drive that they had to me was peak Burrow picking out mismatches. Mm. Um, almost just like perfect, like knowing exactly what throws to make uh, and beating a really good Ravens pass rush. So when he walked off the field and it happened in the second quarter when they went up 10 to seven after that drive, uh, the last thing you thought was he was injured. And then you see him that he got hurt on that last play when he threw the touchdown on the touchdown play. And that preceded what, what Al said on the sideline. And you just wonder if this is it for this team there's no way to know about how long he's going to be out for the injuries but even if he's not out let's just say where they are right now they're five and five they're zero and three in the division they're one and five in the conference they do not have a game in the rest of their schedule dan against a team with a losing record so it's all 500 and above moving forward and uh it just took the total error out of what felt like was going to be one of the defining, like, most exciting games of the season. Uh, I should have known this was going to happen when I locked up Cincinnati. My cursed um, mm. lock season continues, uh, and Greg blessed. Every mm -hmm. every week, mm -hmm. something breaks your way, and this time it was Joe Burrow's wrist. Congratulations. Uh, Bengals head coach Zach Taylor told reporters, reporters after the game that they believe that Burrow has a sprained right wrist. Uh, Rappaport, rap sheet reported uh, that he suffered the injury after he fell on it early in the game, uh, another other big injury news on the other side. John Harbaugh said after the game that Mark Andrews' season is over. Uh, the star Whoa. tight end has an ankle injury uh, that will end his season. So that's a huge setback uh, for the Ravens, for, uh, obviously. Uh, kind of a crushing setback. So, you know, and guess mm. what? This is this is Thursday Night Football, unfortunately. And, I, and there's all these reasons why Thursday Night Football is a great thing for the NFL and it's making gobs of money. Uh, but the injuries are a part of it, and, you know, they're going to go into spin mode here, Cincinnati, about Burrow's wrist injury because they are in line to uh, to be facing league discipline if they did not put him on the injury report. 
Um, and they're getting it. Uh, and, and and listen, like this, they're is, getting it. They're getting fined. I, let's be real that's here. Flash. Let's be let's be real here. We're as a league, they're they're suspending players for weeks and and hundreds of thousands of dollars in fines uh, for unpaid suspensions for gambling on other sports. And if there are teams that are hiding a superstar quarterback's wrist injury going to Thursday night football. How is that not just as bad when you look at yep. it from the context of gambling? Here's some sound uh, from John Harbaugh on uh, the Mark Andrews injury, which, again, is a huge one for Baltimore. I do have one injury announcement to make. Unfortunately, on the negative side, Mark Andrews has a very serious ankle injury. It looks like a season-ending injury. So uh, our prayers will be with Mark. He, uh, nobody cares more about the team. And... Uh, and being there for the guys and Mark Andrews. So this is going to be hard for him, but we're going to be there for him all the way. What mm. what a bummer. Greg, they, they uh, had a stat, uh, and they did pretty well in general moving the ball today. I don't want to take um, take anything away from Baltimore in terms of their offense, which, which played well in this game. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, data points of the difference in this offense when Lamar and Andrews are not together. They came into the league together in terms of chemistry between a QB and tight end. There are a few that possess as much as these guys. So to take Andrews out of the mix, uh, even with the emergence of like an Odell Beckham and a Keaton Mitchell, these guys, they're not the same without him. No, I, for some reason, wasn't ready for that news at all. I know they ruled him out quickly, but I was thinking maybe high ankle sprain. He, he, he gets back, you know, in a, in a handful of weeks. They play Isaiah likely a ton of snaps tonight. He ended up having two targets, did not have a catch. It's a That is a huge loss. The, the Bengals lost Cam Taylor Britt, their number one cornerback, who saved a touchdown on a deep throw, maybe Lamar's best throw of the night. It was one of those beauties where if you're watching on the next gen stats, prime vision, it's just a, a thing of beauty. I mean, that was a, a dart was going to be a touchdown to Bateman that Taylor Britt did a great job catching up on and, and knocking away. He's easily their best cornerback. They also lost BJ Hill, but Andrews, yeah, takes some juice out of their offense and is going to put even more onto what for the most part did well tonight, which was the explosive passing game. Uh, I do want to get back to Burrow later, but w while we're talking about it, I, I think the Ravens came into tonight thinking, let's attack this Bengals secondary deep. That's how they've been losing lately. Let's actually not focus on the running game early in this game. Let's let's pass to throw up the run. And it was kind of an uneven first half. They had some quick drives, but they also had two drives with a, with a bunch of explosive plays. And Odell Beckham ends up with four for 116. He's on the Amazon Prime set right now, so I don't think the shoulder injury at the end of the game w was a big deal. He has two explosive plays. Say Flowers has a 33-yarder on the first drive. Uh, Aguilar gets that weird pass that was a 37-yarder, but there was also the Flowers 70-yard play that was overturned by a bogus penalty. Um, and so this has been an explosive passing game and the Bengals defense uh, has given up more explosive plays than any team in the NFL. It's kind of hard to believe. And that includes runs and they gave up a run of 26 to Edwards and 21 to Mitchell. So they are, they are having major problems. This matchup has been bad for them. And I, I know there was injuries in both of the games, but the Ravens under Harbaugh have done very well against the Zach Taylor Bengals. And, and especially offensively, look, it would have been tough for the Bengals to win this game, even with Burrow. I just would have liked to see it. Yeah. And by the way, that was Odell's first 100 yard game since the 2021 NFC title game. So he really has been coming on. Um, and that's that's good for them, especially with Andrews exiting the picture. I you, I mean, I'm just bummed. I, yeah, because they're Cincinnati's winning. They're winning the game. And it, it's looking like uh, we're going to have a great back and forth affair. Uh, when Burrow heads to the sideline. I don't know if I missed it because I was a little bit behind, so I was fast-forwarding through commercials. Um, and I, when Burrow hits Mixon in the flat for the touchdown, you kind of see Burrow in the background, like, almost doubling over. Yeah. And I don't know if they ever went back to that replay. And if if they didn't, that's a bad job by Amazon. I think they did. I OK, they so did, yeah. I don't want to bury him then. But like so uh, and then, you know, they cut to the sidelines and you see him unable to grip the ball. And the thing is, and we're not doctors, you know, our, <laughs> our mothers, both Debbie's uh, would wish that we were. But we're not. 
um, when when there's a sprain involved, that could be a lot of things, uh, including uh, ligament damage. Uh, so there's going to be uh, MRIs, and he is far from out of the woods. You, we just don't know like what exactly is going on. And and like I said, rap sheet uh, uh, reported what I'm sure the Bengals are putting out there that he the injury happened tonight when he went and landed awkwardly on the yeah, wrist. But there's going to be a lot of there's going to be a lot of uh, Zapruder film studying of the actual situation. Um, and uh, it should also be noted that Zach Taylor also feigned ignorance when he was asked after the game about the video that you're referencing that the uh, social team put out. What? And, well, well, the cover up is on, Greg. This is that's yeah, wild. Well, yeah. one one to be clear is was from a local news organization, one of their local TV stations. So they had it. They didn't take it down. You know, they didn't need to take it down. Uh, they had the footage. And I, I think Chris Long, I watched Chris Long's video and it was pretty compelling. He showed the, the all 22 and they showed Burrow shaking it from last week. And the brace is the brace. Now, to, to your point, which play did he get it hurt on tonight? He did hurt it again tonight. So I don't doubt that he re-injured something that was already bothering him. And as I pointed out, I thought he played well. I, I'm seeing some conspiracy theorists saying like, oh, he was off. His accuracy was off even before this. The, 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 the betters that are angry. I don't think that's true. I think he was excellent because I think the Ravens pass rush was winning almost every snap the first three drives. And yet they got a field goal, a missed field goal attempt and a touchdown. And that was mostly because of Burrow's quick thinking and, and brilliant. So I think he was playing well, but the injury happened. I'm pretty sure on the second to last uh, play that he was on the field for, it was a completion to Mixon where Clowney hit him to the ground uh, after he let go of the ball and it looked like he re-injured it on that one. And then on the touchdown pass, you could see he was in a ton of pain after making that pass. He, he fought through it for one more play through the touchdown. And that was it. And you, you don't want to think that this is just their season. And I, I guess if he, we're just back to where we were, where we won't know, maybe he's going to play, maybe he won't be 100%. Uh, and we're right back to that. And so m maybe it's not totally over, uh, but we're it's very frustrating that at, at best we're back to where we were when he was fighting through this other injury and we're just going to be seeing how much it hampers him. And I don't know, I have a sinking feeling it's going to be worse than that. Yeah, it, this has been, it's interesting that last year's um, two teams going into the playoffs that I think a lot of people, um, or there are three obviously with the Chiefs, but the Bills and Bengals are, were seen as the big three with the Chiefs uh, in the AFC and we documented Buffalo's struggles this season all week. And now Cincinnati, they don't, they have some excuses built in that Buffalo doesn't because of the quarterback injury situation. Uh, but there's no way around it. I mean, this is a very disappointing uh, team right now. And yeah, it's going to take, if, if, if he's seriously injured, it's over. And you just hate that because I think there was a, another chapter um, to the Cincinnati season with Burrow, uh, putting the team on his back, but if he's not going to be healthy, you know, there's no Josh Dobbs on this roster. The, you know, we <laughs> saw some of Browning today that he didn't he didn't inspire much in the way of confidence. It's a tough environment Browning to enter that game, and he did get a garbage time <laughs> touchdown to Jamar Chase. This helps some fantasy people out there, but otherwise, uh, tough situation. Oh, thank you, uh, Randy Chavez, big funk. Uh, wow. Okay. I see. I exactly as they went to break Zeuser had already hit the fast forward button. Um, <laughs> it's showing his follow through Yeah, and he's look like, looks like he's in agony as, Oh he yeah. When they showed him pass. even try to throw on the sideline too, he looks so bad. And, and I'm with you when you lose a great quarterback and Burroughs, no question, top five, it, it hurts the league in general. I was growing increasingly dubious that this Bengals team had enough to make the Super Bowl. It doesn't mean they wouldn't win a playoff game. It doesn't mean they wouldn't be in the mix and in, in, in some great games and in some shootouts. But this defense, like Chidobi, Chidobi Awuzie, who, who was a great player for them before he got hurt again last year, has not been the same. He was benched in this game um, and has given up a ton of big plays. The, the defense is giving up just a ton of big plays week after week. And when I watch Burrow against a good pass rush, their pass protection stinks. It's it's like old times. And so that's a lot to overcome. Burrow would overcome a lot. They're running the ball pretty well. They can run block well. Like they, It's not like they were bereft of talent, but they, they seemed a, a little more uh, problematic a, as a team around Burrow this season to me 
uh, than, than they had been in the past. I think you showed, I think you saw that tonight. I mean, they gave up, you know, 30, what did they give up? 34 points. I know Burroughs injury is like part of that, that they couldn't hold on to the ball. You know, that, that took the wind out of the uh, sails for that team. You could tell. I don't want to make excuses. For I hear that you, team, but they but were given, that, they give up, they give up three big plays before that too. And two touchdowns. Browning was lo- losing the game too. When they came in. I'm with you. Like it, it's a bit of an excuse, but that's not the excuse for last week. My point is they played two big time offenses, back to back weeks, big time quarterbacks, and they got filleted by both of them. Uh, all right. Let's see. One other thing. Uh, the same player involved on the Mark Andrews tackle, who was the, it was a linebacker for uh, Cincinnati, uh, was also the same linebacker that tackled Lamar near the sideline and sent him to the sidelines uh, briefly with an ankle injury. Uh, but it was the Andrews tackle. That's, and Mike uh, Garofolo's, uh tweeting about it right now. The hip drop tackle, which is, when you kind of, it's almost like you kind of saddle up on the guy and, and pull him down. Uh, that creates awkward angles. That's what happened on the Andrews play. John mm. Harbaugh said, was it even necessary in that situation? So that has mm. uh, been a point of discussion, that tackle with a competition committee. And now that a star player like Andrews is lost for the season in prime time, sometimes that pushes those type of things over the finish line. So keep an eye on that. Uh, and when it comes time for the competition committee and the and the owners to vote on uh, safety changes ahead of next season. Anything else, uh, Greggy, on this game? I am I'm furious. This is the first time I'm mad about a lock because not only did I feel good about the lock off, Greg, um, I was like one of those things you get to like root along with the uh, uh, Joe Burrow in prime time in a huge division game. So to have that all kind of swiped away, it all it all feels like a like an ugly Thursday night and the Andrews uh, injury just compounds that. Yeah. And we already heard that you're double, you're double banging him there. Chavez. It's, oh, well, I guess he just brought it. It's up. all right. You know, that is uh funk has that right because he's been doing a great job for us. He, he, he absolutely is. And I, I, I did not enjoy it. It was Logan Wilson, by the way, um, Logan Wilson, you know, the good, very good, you know, Bengals Sh- linebacker who got String paid, him who, up by his britches. No, well, no, just kidding. I, you know, anytime Logan Wilson comes up for the rest of his career, I'm going to think of the holding call he had in the end zone that, you know, potentially flipped the Super Bowl. And I was thinking about that night tonight. And I think about that with all these teams that get close that it, it just in, in the, you think about it with the Bills in that game against the Chiefs. It's just it's so hard to get back to that point. And I, I always thought that was kind of a bogus Logan Wilson call. It was a bad night for the refs, by the way. I mean, there was a lot going on in this game that. The holding call on Beckham that negated a 70-yard Zay Flowers touchdown was one of the worst calls of the season. And then there was about two or three PI calls against the Bengals, so it went both ways, that extended that Ravens touchdown drive at the end of the... I mean, the uh, second one that put the game away, essentially, after Burrow was out. uh, A total phantom call. And there was nothing we could say about it because we're not going to ever go back to instant replays. Uh, But that is like... I mean, that's a whatever it was, 20, 30 yard penalty that, that really sets up the knockout punch for the Ravens at the end of the half. I, I do want to give a little bit of credit, you know, even early in this game when Burrow was out there, like Kyle Hamilton is making play after play after play. He's, he's been a pro bowler. He's turned into a big time player for them. And Brandon Stevens was, was opposite chase all night. And even early, like, I know it's tough to evaluate once Browning came in. He, he was a little better than I expected, but still looked like a backup, but they just have guys making plays. Adafi Owe, they've been hoping to get a pass rush, has had a sack in three straight games. Clowney, Matabuke, like they were winning early. Um, I liked my lock going into the night too because I really you know, believe that the Ravens are a, a step above the Bengals. We, we won't get to find out. And so I take no solace in it, but there are a lot of pieces here. I, I think it, now with the Bills and the Bengals kind of falling off, you, you really do see it opening up as, as with them. They're eight and three now as – as the favorite, you know, behind Kansas City or with Kansas City, but they're kind of uh, separating themselves a little bit. AFC is crazy. I really wish – I don't know if I'm on record here, so I will – I really wish Aaron Rodgers didn't tear his Achilles tendon on the fourth play of the season. <laughs> Sorry for um, that. By uh, the way, I, hat trick for Logan Wilson. I, I was not aware of this. Funk, thanks for the heads up. The Bengals linebacker also had the hard tackle on Odell Beckham late in the game that sent him – uh, to the sideline, wincing in pain. So in one night, Logan Wilson injured Odell Beckham, Mark Andrews, and Lamar Jackson. That's 
I don't know. I don't know how how do you sleep well at night, Logan? I don't know. And like I know the the Andrews tackle was a little dicey, but it's legal, street legal. But uh, that's kind of a a destructive Thursday and a losing effort. That the the Lamar one was, you know, on the sideline. I don't know if it was late hit, but it, it was on the sideline. Lamar Lamar had uh, ice on his ankle, was heating it the rest of the game, but he did did play through it. He looked a little less uh nimble than he normally does even though he, he still ran for 50 was he even wearing years. cleats tonight like what was going on know, with he, him on the he, turf he kept slipping and falling Very so did strange keaton, so did keaton mitchell uh, it's a weird a, game it, it, i didn't like it it really I didn't like the, it Craig. The, the crowd was amazing i thought and it, it impacted the game early all those delay of games and the fall start they just seemed just felt like like it was the loudest uh, crowd of the night and then there was a next gen stats <laughs> Um, stat, I wanted to point yes. out to you, Dan. <laughs> You're just like, you were just like talking over my disappointment with the game by how great the crowd was. That's good. Oh, you well, just, extra 10 I had written it down that like, this, this was the most memorable <laughs> crowd performance maybe of the season. There was one in Seattle. That was good. They were just so loud. It was crazy. You don't think they were so Stop. loud and they were, they were really messing with the Bengals, including when Burrow was out there, they couldn't get a play on time. And then there's false start. There were delay of games. All there right. were timeouts. I'm just saying they came out hot. They were, it was, a, it was a good crowd. Ravens, what, whatever you guys call yourselves, the flock, you definitely did bring it. Love here's that. A, here's just a, a stat with n- no real connection to this game, but I found it amazing. And as the owner of the kicker club, I thought you would too. I didn't even know there was a field goals over expected stat. Did you know this? Dan? No. <laughs> no. I didn't know there was. Are we? Um, okay. so this is a real thing. <laughs> Go ahead. Tucker going into tonight had yeah. 45.8 field goals over expected since he entered the league. That is double, nearly double <laughs> any other kicker in the NFL since 2016. Double. He 45. is more dominant wow. compared to his competition at his position than anyone maybe in any sport, you know, like at any always, position. It, it's nearly double. That's pretty That's pretty. Ridiculous. I know he has the um, the record and, you know, the 66 yarder and everything. But the thing that I've always loved the most about Tucker is just how automatic he is at the part of the field where most kickers are basically coin flip. Like his, his accuracy, you know, from 48 to 52 is just otherworldly. I know he has a weird, it's a kind of a weird funky stat this year that he's one of five, I believe on 50 yarders this year, but there's a couple blocks in there. Like he's, um, he's a joy to watch and he hasn't really had his big moment yet this season. He's just chugging along, uh, but it's coming. He's going to win a couple of games for them before. Well, let's it's get, let's done. get him in a, it could be his first chance to play in like an AFC championship type of moment. We have, we haven't seen that. Out of Justin Tucker's career. Well, your your quarterback's going to need to step up in the crucible, my friend. I uh, I know we're we're often on the TV beat, and I know you gotta you gotta catch a bird. You're going to New York tomorrow. That'll be. Fun. I got an early early flight, yes, with my two sons. Um, so, but yeah. I Let's I did it find it notable, Carissa Thompson, <laughs> after uh, that appearance she had on on Pardon My Take, where she admitted to sometimes making up interviews with coaches. I did find it interesting. She, she still broadcast the game here with Amazon. I do wonder if the game had been one day later hmm. with um, all the reaction that that's happened. And I think a lot of it, um, you know, well said is kind of the whole thing was, was mystifying that, that she would have said that, that she would have done that. I, I don't know if that would have been different. So it's just as someone as you know, we, we watch this stuff closely. It, it's a it's an interesting sports media one to watch. Oh, for sure. And she's getting absolutely killed. So. I'm not going to pile on, but I will say this because I, as a somebody who grew up listening uh, to Howard Stern, um, sometimes you'll see a guest go on a show like that, or in this case, PFT and um, and Big Cat, the Barstool podcast, and because they know uh, that the type of what the audience is or what what the vibe of the show is, they try to be extra irreverent or edgy or kind of try to present themselves in a, in a light that makes them seem cool. Uh, and you end up just kind of sticking your foot in your mouth. And I think that's what happened with Thompson. Apparently she said she'd said something like that in the past. Uh, but uh, that, that podcast has a huge audience and she was asking for trouble and now she's got it. Yeah. The lack of judgment to, to say it is, I'm not saying it's worse than doing it in the first place, but it's telling very fair all right 
real quick, last word, Lamar Jackson talking about that sore ankle. He has to be all right. He didn't miss a snap, but uh, let's hear what Lamar had to say. But I'm good. We, we need to stop talking about this ankle. I'm good. You see, I just walked up here. I'm good. <laughs> we ain't going to talk nothing to existence, you know, speak nothing to existence. I'm good. <laughs> It's Lamar's funny. been so happy this year. There really is a difference among him with this contract and everything. Like he, in his press conferences, it's just been like he's he's loving life and I he, he kind of already talks like an eighty three year old grandfather. <laughs> I I, well, I don't know what he's gonna sound like when he actually is old, but uh, uh, yeah, the, I think he should know. The reason people are asking is because like the last two years the Ravens had were seven and three also now they're eight and three and he got hurt and their entire season literally went up in flames so obviously the beat reporters are going to be a little keyed in on that uh situation but he looked good he sounds optimistic that he won't miss any time anything else Greg that's it let's go buddy all right I will uh see you via the magic of the internet on Sunday uh, on the other side of the country. Uh, until then, everybody check out NFL Plus where we had our latest Dreamatorium episode and uh, check out the Week 11 preview with Nick Shook and uh, hopefully we'll all be back together, Mark Sessler included, on Sunday. Till then, heed the call. Heed the call.